Hello, it's Shweb here from Media King. And what we're going to look at in this lesson is how to create a microservices architecture and infrastructure. Now, microservices are just a new way of saying web service. One of the main differences is that microservices are independent and each microservice should ideally be its own unit, independent piece of code and function. And now they're also hosted on cloud. Um, in the cloud services, so from AWS to Azure to IBM and Google Cloud, we'll be using Google Cloud's Firebase service to design, build, and host our microservices. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what you can see here is just a sample file. We don't need to worry too much about what it does right now. I'll also post this in the description. First thing you need to do is head over to firebase.google.com and in here you can um, create your project to host your microservices. So click on get started right there. Once you've done that you'll be asked for a name for it. So let's give that right now. Microservices tutorials for me. Okay and click continue. We don't want any testing or analytics. Switch that off and click Create Project. So this will take a few moments and it's going to create our project. Just remember Firebase and Google Cloud has a lot more features and functionality, but we're just using one or two in order to design and host our microservices. And each Firebase project you create is essentially its own Google Cloud project as well, because Google Cloud is the parent of Firebase. So click continue. So here you're loaded into your project area. You've got obviously settings, authentication, database, storage, and these are all the other functions and services you can use from Google Firebase. All we care about for now is sign in and sign out and uh, functions. So go to authentication and we could switch that on. In fact, set up sign in method, click that first, and choose email and password. In other videos, we'll cover how to sign in with other providers, but for now, this should do. So click on this little pencil icon and enable it. Click save, and you're good to go. So, next thing, go into functions, and we're going to set up our functions. Remember we said each function is our microservice. Each microservice is a separate function. So click get started. And what you want to do before you copy this one is we want to initialize our project and make it use Node.js. And in fact, Node.js's powerful NPM modules. So head over to VS Code. If you don't have your terminal ready, click terminal, new terminal, when it's ready here, and type in npm in it. This sets up a package.json file to save those npm module settings. Click enter. Yes, we want that name, so click enter, 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 and enter. That's it few enters and we're ready to go. Now we'll get rid of this server.js file because this should live on the front end. For now, all we care about is the back end. I've just left it here for notes. So what you need to do next is um, copy this here, npm install Firebase tools. The hyphen G just means it's a global module. So copy that and then paste it in VS Code. Hit enter. This should install Google Firebase globally. Okay, that's done that there. The next thing we need to do is um, 
Next, we need to do the next thing we need to do is copy this command here, Firebase initialization, paste that in, and click enter. Yes, hit Y. All we want is functions for now. Authentication doesn't really come as part of this CLI. Use an existing project and then go down to find it. MS Tutorials, hit enter. JavaScript, hit enter. Yes. And install dependencies just now and click yes. This will install our node um, modules folder as well. And what you'll notice is a functions folder that was created for us. It's got its own index file and it's got package.json file as well. This is slightly different to the one we've got here on the application layer. This is purely for the microservices and the microservices folder and its own node underscore modules folder. Okay. So that's done. It's telling you your Firebase initialization is completed and Firebase functions have been installed in the Firebase functions folder. So the next step is click finish on Firebase console in your browser. And it's going to say waiting for your first deploy. This means it's waiting for you to deploy your first microservices or function. So let's do that just now. Go back to VS Code and you can see in the functions folder, we have an index.js file. All you need to do to create your first microservice is literally just uncomment this, these few lines here and this one finally. And what we can do is click save and then I believe it's Firebase deploy. It'll tell you here, Firebase deploy. Copy that. Back in VS Code, paste it and hit Firebase deploy. What this will do is communicate is your fire with your Firebase console project and deploy each function or each microservice in your index.js file right here. So the first microservice that will be deployed is this here called Hello World. Give it a few moments and you'll just see how quick this really is. And as you can see or tell, when we once we've deployed this microservice, when we call it, we should receive a response of Hello from Firebase. This could be basic text, could be a redirect, or any other type of data coming from a database or JSON and a load of other stuff as well. And just to mention things like that are out with this lesson. It's almost there now. You can see the steps down here as it's running through. On the final step, it's deploying your microservice called Hello World to the location called US Central in Firebase, that's your hosting or data location, and it's using Node.js over in Firebase as well. That's the Node version. And remember, that might be different to any other Node version you have on your computer. It's almost there now. Can take a bit longer sometimes. Bam, and there you go. Deploy was successful and it's completed perfectly. And what you can see here, it will give you the endpoint or URL for your microservice. And it, you could just copy it right here. If you want to find it again, you could go in here in your functions. If you refresh the page, you can see your first microservice just there. Hello world. And you could copy this URL just here. Get the whole URL, including the H. If you open a new tab, and you could just quickly navigate to it. Here you go. That's your first microservices deployed in under 10 minutes. Hello from Firebase. And we could change this and redeploy it. And you'll see it's super quick. If we go to here. It's 
hello from media king toot save and then just hit redeploy again this take a few moments should be quicker this time a tiny bit because it knows your microservices already exists and remember we called it hello world so you can see quite quickly well that's doing how powerful this is this could have been called get full get full name and you could push in the full name of someone from a database you could call this get address or add address you could call this um, sign in or sign out and you could sign in via a microservice so you can see how powerful you can quickly design your system with not much effort. There you go. It's successfully redeployed. Go back here, refresh the page. Hello from Media King 2. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Slightly bumpy. In, um, but yeah, that's a quick and uh, um, short way of how to begin your journey into designing, building and hosting microservices on Google Cloud and Firebase. So be sure to look out for the next tutorial where we'll expand on our microservices architecture by adding new microservices and functions and host these as well. And you start seeing dynamic things like we can sign out and sign in from there as well. So another way to test on microservices, which we'll look at in the next tutorial as, in the next tutorial as well, is call them or interact with them from Postman. Um, so if you look at it, this here, Postman provides us a quick way to interact microservices where we don't have to build the full infrastructure end to end. In most cases, it's the front end, whether it's a mobile app, a desktop app, a website. You don't want to develop forms for people to sign in or to log in. Um, you don't want to develop forms for people to, to add new data. You could quickly just come into Postman. You could put in your um, microservices endpoint in case of a form you'll add for instance a body such like as this if we were to add a first name it'll be called name or f name and then you'll put in your first name here for instance john and if you push this if this was a microservice as to collect the first name it will get this first name you add here and push it and return it as a response of our microservices. In the real world, we take that response, i.e. the name John, and we push it into a database or some other form of API. So just to show you here, obviously John won't work in this because it's not our Hello World endpoint or microservices. It's not made to collect names. It's just made to spit out what we gave it here. It's a simple string, hello from Media King Toots. So let's call that there. Send. We want a get because we're getting data. And you can see here, um, let's look at the response. I think it's down the bottom. There you go. Hello from Media King Toots. So there you have it, a quick and dirty way into microservices. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please be sure to subscribe and stick around uh, with us for the next ones. Thank you.